it's a big wow moment when you come up upon a Carol Eisner sculpture. To have a grandmother of 12 moving steel beams together that weigh tons is extremely rare. I think that if those viewers saw the size of Carol on top of some of her 18 and 20 foot plus pieces, they'd be amazed. Going to Syracuse was the first time I had real instruction, real sophisticated instruction on art and what it went into making art, how to design, how, how to sketch, how to paint in different media. It was a wonderful eye-opening and educational experience. Well, Carol is multifaceted as an artist. She was a designer as a young woman. She designed fabrics and clothing. Well, I loved seeing my sketches come to fruition and become a real uh, dress that models would wear in the runway. Then in uh, 1961, I was chosen by Mademoiselle magazine as the designer of the year, and that was a quite heady experience. I always remember my mother working. We came home from school, she was in her studio, painting away, painting, painting, painting. It was inspirational to be her daughter and to grow up in that environment. I looked at her work and I thought it was very strong and very interesting. And since she was a graduate of SU, we decided that we would have a show at the Lupin House Gallery, which we did in 1980, a very successful show. The pure abstract paintings, I love the logic and simplicity of the design. I hope the viewer will respond to the composition and to the singing of the colors on the, on the canvas. I discovered sculpture when I was pregnant with my fifth child. A friend knew I was an artist and called me up to ask if I would like to learn to weld in her aunt's studio. As I lit the torch for the first time, a big boom happened because I didn't have the oxygen and acetylene in the right mixture for each other. So that was a bit scary but I was hooked. I loved it. She's very fun to work with and thinks outside of the box in terms of the materials that she uses and doesn't see metal as kind of this uh, hard, impermeable object. She's very flexible and, and likes to work and make it seem as though it's a very free-flowing material. I can put it together, I can weld it together. If I don't like it, I could edit it, I can take it apart, I can re-weld it. Uh, I don't have to worry about it breaking. When she has a vision, that she wants to see realized. She sticks with it until she does, even if it means using the hydraulic lifts and getting those massive pieces of steel welded together, she finds a way. It's a great challenge to take pieces of scrap and make them into something else, pieces that have served other purposes in life and are now uh, art. Most people have this memory of thinking of twisted and curved I-beams as destruction. And yet she takes this and she puts it together in a beautiful lyrical expression uh, of sculpture, which gives this tremendous strength and life to the works of art. Public art provides a city with an identity. And I find my work, when it's in a public situation, very satisfying because then I'm part of what is making the city vital and interesting. One of the great things about Carol is that she donates her works to the city of Norwalk at no cost. And uh, she's had, you know, over the years, 20 or 30 different pieces in various parks within the city of Norwalk. Right now we have Carol Eisner's piece on view at Tramway Plaza in Midtown, New York City. The piece Hosea clearly reflects the mechanical systems of the tram that actually lets off in Tramway Plaza. Also just that there are so many commuters heading back and forth and it gives people a moment to pause and they actually stop and look at the sculpture and take it in. You know, the art world has this um, concept that if you haven't made it by the time you're 35, you might as well find a new line of work. Well, Carol never got that memo, which is very fortunate for us. And she has continued to evolve so that the work that she's producing now is at the highest level of sculpture that's being done in the world. In the end, it's the sculptures themselves that have to speak to you. I hope people will be engaged in the power of these abstract forms, be intrigued by the line, the shapes, Maybe they will think of the history of where the pieces came from.
Does the viewer see what I see? Are they baffled or delighted by some discovery in the work? I can never know.